winter garden is the centerpiece of the Biltmore House, and a beautifully designed one it is. Of course, you can find extraordinary residences all over the world, and not just on land. A cruise of nautical homes now from John Blackstone. Sun on San Francisco Bay, the dock that inspired Otis Redding in the 1960s. This is the bay, and this this is a dock, and he was sitting here. Is still providing inspiration to all the others who've made these houseboat docks their home. Stan Barberich and his wife Sonia have been living here more than 20 years. It changes your view of where you live and how you live your life because you're surrounded by the, the natural world. But in these natural surroundings, the architecture is often anything but natural. There's one called the Owl, and one fashioned as the Taj Mahal, another seemingly designed for a princess. There are tugboats and ferries converted into homes. This waterborne community in the town of Sausalito, across the bay from San Francisco, has long been known as a home to free spirits. Anytime someone could make a floatable base or find one, and then they just built whatever they wanted. There were no codes, and so whatever a person could dream, they made. He lives on a houseboat out on the bay, and the waves roll in, and they wash him away. The first homes here in the 1800s were floating summer cottages they called arcs. After the 1906 earthquake destroyed much of San Francisco, many arcs became permanent homes. When shipyards here closed after World War II, former workers and war vets moved into discarded boats. In the 60s, uh, discovered by dreamers, curmudgeons, uh, ne'er-do-wells, and some that did very well. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. People like Jean Varda, Allen Ginsberg, Alan Watts, Shel Silverstein, all of these guys were here, and it was part of the 1960s sort of summer of love phenomenon, but went on for a lot more than a summer. <laughs> Jim McCullough and Maylee Cook, two 20-year residents, say that while there are rules here now, living on the water means going with the flow. It's like living in a piece of kinetic sculpture. I mean, just coming out, everything is moving, it looks different every day, and that's fun. There's a sense of community, too. I mean, the fact that you are here with other people, we're all kind of in the same boat, no pun intended, and you do look out for each other. While the houseboats of San Francisco Bay are perhaps the most celebrated, there are others in Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver. Some wonderful, wonderful, eclectic homes up and down the coast. Dan Wittenberg designs floating homes in Vancouver. Now, how would you like to live on an island? It's a totally different thing than living on land where you have fences and that kind of thing. You got your own island. Some of those islands are grand. This houseboat in Portland features a copper exterior and a shape inspired by rolling waves. People that are going to live on the river, they want something a little bit crazier than they've been used to. They don't want a normal house. They want something that really, you know, that really stands out. Mark Evans' Portland company built that one, and this multi-million dollar home for oil man Ted Bentley and his family. It has a turret library, dumbwaiter, full bar and sauna, all designed around a spiral staircase. We saw this uh, staircase in an architectural book, and it's just something that we thought would be an essential design element to the house. The almost 4,000 square foot home was floated 30 miles downriver to its slip. And this is your front yard. This is it, front yard, backyard, side yard. All of the good stuff, Treasure Island, uh, Alcatraz, uh, and the city, of course, San Francisco. 
And for longtime residents like Cornell Ross and Pam Bousquet, their eclectic Sausalito community is a setting like no other. There is something just special about the lighting in the lagoon here. When the sun goes down or just before it goes down, everything turns golden. Then you've got a layer of lavender and pinks, and it just sparkles. Maybe that's why Otis Redding sat here so long.